Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to share with you the connection between autism and fertility treatments. Now, in this country, there are millions of people, uh, thousands and thousands of couples that are trying to get pregnant. And the one thing I think I have to tell you right away is many of these people shouldn't be trying to get pregnant because a lot of these, a lot of the women simply aren't healthy enough to get pregnant or maintain a pregnancy. And fertility treatments are essentially a way of dominating the woman's body and physiology and basically forcing it to become pregnant and carry the pregnancy. And there are tremendous side effects to these fertility treatments. One of the drugs that's popularly used is called Clomid. And Clomid reduces cholesterol. And that's the connection between fertility treatments and autism. And I'll explain why. You can do the research. You can look up the data. Babies that are born uh, through fertility treatments have a higher rate of complications, a higher rate of developmental delays. And here's one of the reasons why. One of the reasons is cholesterol is necessary for all of your hormones. Cholesterol is the precursor for testosterone, for estrogen, for all these hormones that are vital to your function. Now just think about how vital they have to be to a developing fetus. Hormones direct the way that neurons uh, grow and make connections. And if you're in a low cholesterol state, that brain development can easily be altered, can easily be delayed. And it really shouldn't surprise us that if cholesterol is a precursor for hormones, and if we have a mother who's got low cholesterol and she gives baby in a low cholesterol state, and the baby has low cholesterol, it shouldn't surprise us at all that we've got developmental delays. So for me, it brings up a couple of issues. One, why are so many people infertile? Well, assuming the man's, uh, the sperm count and sperm motility has been checked, what it really comes down to, I have found, is that fertility comes into kind of three different categories. One, there is a, an adrenal gland problem, which we can talk about later. Two, there's undiagnosed autoimmunity. And third, there's usually some sort of gluten intolerance. And I've seen this a bunch of times. And keep in mind, if the mom has an autoimmune condition, okay, so there's strike one, and she's got gluten intolerance, there's strike two, and maybe she doesn't even know she has these things. And she's got an adrenal gland disorder, meaning her adrenal glands are not working correctly not producing enough cortisol, enough of the things that they do. So there's strike number three. And then she gets a fertility drug that lowers her cholesterol. There are four big physiological strikes, bombs, that are huge risk factors for having a child with a developmental delay. So, you know, what do you do? Well, if you have an autistic child and it was born through fertility treatments, one of the things that you should be looking at, and I hope, whoever, I hope you see someone who understands this, you should be looking at what's this child's cholesterol level. And remember, I take a different perspective on this. I mean, uh, cholesterol is not evil. Sometimes you've got to raise cholesterol levels in certain patients to help their physiology, to help them function the way they're supposed to. Not squash it, but actually raise it. So hopefully, if you have an autistic child born through fertility treatments, uh, you're seeing someone who understands this aspect. Now, the second thing is, if you are you know, having trouble conceiving and you're thinking about fertility treatments, you probably need to see someone who has more of a functional approach. And I'm not necessarily talking about an acupuncturist or a naturopath. I'm talking about someone who understands all the things I just talked to you about, autoimmunity, gluten intolerance, uh, cholesterol pathways, adrenal. You need to find someone who understands those things because you may be trying to have a baby and you're not healthy enough and you're just not in the right place in your life physically to have a child that's going to be healthy and have the least risk of developmental delays. Believe me, the magic of a child, is, I mean, I understand that I have a child myself, and I understand the pain. I understand how painful it would have been if, if you're having trouble conceiving. But the last thing you want to do is do something that's going to endanger the normal, typical development of that child. So that's enough, uh, uh, I guess, preaching for today. But there's the connection. It's fertility treatments, particularly Clomid, lower cholesterol, and cholesterol is absolutely necessary for normal brain development. So it shouldn't surprise us that with low cholesterol we get, or fertility treatments, that we get children that have a higher rate of developmental delays because it's most likely impacted how their brain has shaped and connected and developed. So my takeaway message for you is if you've got a child that was born through fertility treatments that has a developmental delay, even if it's not labeled autism, You've got to go back and look at that and find if that, if that low cholesterol state is still happening. And secondly, if you're trying to get pregnant and you're worried about autism, you really need to find someone who can look at you from a global functional perspective and look at those issues of autoimmunity, gluten intolerance. Because there's specific ways to test for these things. And don't waste your time doing blood tests for 
uh, gluten intolerance. Most of them are false negative, I have found. Um, but you got to address those things, okay? So I'll talk to you next time.